From Los Angeles, it's the Tom Micah Show. Oh, God. And now, and now here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Dateline, Lebanon, Ohio. A man accused of threatening his girlfriend and... Get this. Forcing her to marry him to prevent her from testifying against him in court. Was sentenced to three years in prison. I love his name. Gregory Hogg. 41 of Carlisle, Ohio. Pleaded guilty to burglary, abduction, aggravated menacing, and carrying a concealed weapon. As his trial was about to start in Warren County Common Pleas Court. Hogg's girlfriend, Cheryl Skaggs, married him last fall. Skaggs later told police that Hogg forced her to marry because he believed that as his spouse, she could not be compelled to testify against him. Investigator said Hogg was concerned. He might want, I mean, you should have consulted an attorney before he did that, wouldn't you think? Yeah. Like he would be thinking ahead. Investigator said Hogg was concerned he might wind up in court for an August 2003 dispute in which he allegedly pulled out a knife and threatened employees of a Franklin bowling alley who were ejecting him for disorderly behavior. Authorities said Hogg was mistaken and that his wife could have testified against him if she chose to do so. The state's indictment accused Hogg of breaking into his girlfriend's apartment on August 22nd, dragging her out by her hair and beating her. Hogg was arrested on October 13th after Skaggs got away from him at a gas station and alerted a police officer, County Prosecutor Rachel Hutzel said. Hutzel said that Hogg has served prior prison terms on convictions for theft and violent offenses. Now, this is an extreme case. It's an extreme case. He threatens his girlfriend and forces her to marry him to prevent her from testifying against him. And she complies. Now, granted, this is an extreme case, but you know what? Many people feel that they got married under the gun. For example, how many of you uh, knocked up your girlfriend and felt under the gun to get married? You were forced. By the way, nobody is forced to marry anybody. I mean, clearly, you can always say no. You can always not sign the paperwork. You can always not go down to the courthouse, the judges' chambers, the church, the synagogue, the reception hall, whatever... You can just not show up. But many times people show up because they feel under the gun, forced, compelled. Like they have to do it. So I'm wondering if that's you. You got married. Now, maybe you were threatened with a gun, threatened with worse Maybe you felt scared and trapped and you just said, okay, 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 I'll do it. Again, the story we read to you is an extreme case. But I'll bet there's many people out there right now 
got married because they felt like they had to. If that's you, call me. <laughs> At 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. All right, do you feel you were forced into getting married? Forced. Anything from gunpoint on down. Harmony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Daddy. Hello, dear. <laughs> well, it wasn't a man that forced me to get married. It was my parents. Your parents forced you? Yes. How did that happen? Well, when I was a teen, they became born-again Christians, and they just drilled it in my head that in order to be with a man, I had to be married to them. So I did it once, and it didn't work out very well, and I was so foolish at the time, I turned around and did it again. No. Yes, I did. Oh, boy. <laughs> but now I know you. <laughs> Look at you. Now, let me ask you a question. How long did it take in each case? After you got married, to know this was not going to last. The first one, I knew the first week we got home. He was wonderful to me, and then he uh, totally changed for me when we got our own place. I was a naive little girl. I didn't know the difference, you know. Right. And the second time? The second time, uh, it took me about three years. Three years? So the first three yeah. years, you thought this was forever. <laughs> I tried really hard. But uh, now I know how things work. I'm, I'm a grown girl, and uh, I was, I've been listening to you for about two years, right when I left my second husband. <laughs> there we go. And I know so much more about the world now. There we go. So now how do your parents feel about the fact that you're banging anything that moves? I don't even care. <laughs> yes. Do they know? Do they know you have a sex life? Yes, they do. And they do not like it, and they do not support it, and I do not care. <laughs> oh, boy. But they haven't stopped talking to you or anything like that, have they? Uh, no, they talk to me, but they keep it on a real superficial level, mm -hmm. which is fine with me because I don't need to deal with people like that. I've got enough support from you and my friends, yeah. everybody else. Yes. So. Well, I'm glad we're able to help out, Harmony. Absolutely. Thank you. Anytime, dear. Bye. Talk to you later. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Michael? All right, we'll go look for Michael. Let's say hi here. Tony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? All right. All righty. Uh, let me set it up for you first. Well, I've been listening for a long time, first time caller, but I pretty much, your subject, I hit it right on the dot. Uh, worked at a restaurant. Uh, you know, when you work at a restaurant, 50 to 100 people that work there, the hottest girl at the restaurant. She was a little 19, 20 year old. Uh, held her. I'm six years older than her. And for the first year working there, no one could touch her. Eventually, a year down the line, I asked her out, and we went out. We started going out. Keep in mind, she is like a, an L89, and she's 19, 20 years old. Uh, the first time we talked on the phone, we talked about her sexual activities and everything. Make a long story short, I ended up hitting that. Uh, we started kind of a relationship, and right when we started the relationship, her mom and dad split up. And from that point on, everything went downhill. No. And uh, about a year into the relationship, she asked me to marry her. And uh, I said, yeah. So we ran off to Vegas. Why did you feel like you had to marry her? You know what? She, she, like I said, she's an L.A. 9, which means so her... So it's because she was hot. Did she threaten to leave you if you didn't marry her? No, but her, her insecurities were so bad that I knew if I told her... She pretty much got rejected by her dad when her mom and dad split up. I guess what happened there is, like, she got in... They put her in between when they shouldn't have, and uh, her dad kind of plotted to leave. Uh, we kind of figured that out, but he ended up transferring pretty much every credit card of his to the mom's account. And beside that, he took about $30,000 of her money. Wow. And, you know, the whole, I mean, so when he left, she pretty much was devastated, and I think she needed, you know, a father figure or something, so she asked me to marry her. And she was so fragile at the time that I... 
I mean, I knew if I would have said no, she would have felt as if I was rejecting her as well. And I thought I would eventually marry her down the line, so I figured, you know what, why not? And, uh... So you figured, why not? Well, that doesn't sound like you felt like you were forced to marry her. Well, I, mean, I didn't feel forced. I mean, I, I... Well, that's the question. I was asking if you felt like you were forced to get no, married. No, I didn't feel I was forced. I mean, we got married on New Year's Eve two years ago this past uh, January. And uh, this actually this January we split up. And uh, for four or five months we haven't been together now. And uh, the thing that kind of was bad is the whole time we were together, I did nothing but go broke. I mean, she's an only child with her mom and dad. And when we met, she was already driving an M3, which, I mean, you know, it's not a cheap car, but that kind of tells you what she's used to. Yeah, but uh, you didn't pay any attention to that, did you? Uh, you know, it was kind of exciting being able to go with a girl with a badass car that looked really, really good. Yeah, but uh, don't you understand that uh, if she has a badass car today, you'll be paying for the next badass car? Do you, you understand? I, I've been paying from the point we started going out. But that's my point, pal. Well, I mean, I'm not calling to justify anything I did. I'm just calling to tell you how bad I screwed up. I mean, anybody can get a 9 or a 10 if you're ready to pay and pay and pay. Yeah, I mean, I, I just... I mean, no now, accomplishment. Here's the worst-case scenario now. Now she's back at home with her mom. Uh, she kept both dogs, by the way. And I'm so broke right now that I... We actually moved to Vegas for five months because of, of my work. And uh, when we had figured out that we were going to split up, we moved back within a week. And I was so broke that I had to move back with my parents. Uh-huh. And I've been living here... So she dragged you into the quicksand? Pretty much. Mm-hmm. And I've never been in this big of a hole ever in my life. Right. And I can't get dig myself out of it. Well, there you go. So uh, you uh, you married a nine or a ten exactly. who uh, had expensive taste. A twenty-one year old. You ignored the red flags that she drives expensive cars and has expensive taste. It was every red flag imaginable. And then you ended up paying for everything, and now exactly. you're broke and had to move back in with your parents at twenty-eight years old. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not try trying to spank you here. I'm hoping the other boys out there uh, who meet a nine or a ten at work. Uh, don't do what you did, okay. and for all the reasons that you now know. No, and it was uh, she. She didn't work the three years of our relationship, uh -huh. which you were okay with. Well, not really, because I knew at her age she was trying to figure out what she wanted to do. I mean, she got a she got into UCLA, which she went to for half a. But that's that's why I tell people not to get into relationships till they're twenty five, because by the time you're twenty five, you have to have a career. If you're not married, you don't have anybody paying the bills. You have to go to school. You have to have a career. You have to have direction. When you uh, cherry-pick somebody who's 19 or 20 years old, they always have that as an excuse for not doing anything. It gets a lot worse, actually. A lot, lot worse. I'll bet it does. Well, Tony, we don't have all day. But uh, thank you for telling us uh, that much of the story. It's about all I can take. Really, I want to take my hands and reach right through the speakers of your radio. My left hand to the left speaker, the right hand to the right speaker, and choke your goddamn neck. That's what I want to do. Because you were so goddamn stupid. And I know there are other goddamn stupid people who listen to this show who would do the exact same thing. The exact same thing. 1-800-5800. Oh. Tom is our telephone number. Do you feel you are forced into marriage? James on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Professor. How's it going? Okay, James. Hey, man. Immigration judge forced me to marry this chick. My girlfriend, otherwise you said it's either marriage or other country. Well, in what country were you from? I was, I'm from England. And did you have, uh, what, you had like a, a, a visitor's visa? Yeah, I was here for school, then I wanted to stay for some work, and I was, uh, keep extending my visa. Then you, at one point they didn't extend my visa anymore, but I was working, I had a good job, so they put me on a uh, removal status. And then he said, uh, yeah, you're going to either marry her or you're out of the country, so I have to marry her. So let I me gotta... understand, you married your girlfriend because if you didn't, you'd have to leave the country. Is that yeah. the one and only reason you married her? Yeah, I had to. So you didn't love her? No, not necessarily. You didn't want to be with her? No. She was just I a convenient know. booty call while you were in a, a, different, a different city, a, a foreign city. Exactly. That being Seattle. Yep. And uh, so you married a woman you did not love because if you didn't, you'd have to leave your job and leave the country. Yep, you got it. All right. And so are you still with her? Yeah, I have another year to go before I got my citizenship so I can uh, end all this misery. 
So you're going to stay until you get your green card. Yep. And I then am. when you get your green card, you're going to leave. Does she know that? Yeah, she's pretty much figuring out now. So, she figured uh, it out. Starts, uh, having little problems here and there, but uh, what are you going to do, you know? Um, and so she's figured it out, and but, but but here's the deal. Doesn't she have to go with you to the INS for an interview? Well, we, we passed that part of it. I got my green card, but I'm waiting for my citizenship. And you still have to well, you, you already have a green card? How long have you been with her? Uh, it's been about four and a half years. Four and a half years? Yeah. That's a lot of your life just to just to get citizenship of the United States to be with someone you don't love. I know, man. It, it, immigration works in terrible ways. It's the worst working department of the government, you can tell. Are you banging other chicks? Oh, you bet. <laughs> yeah, you're banging other chicks. And does she know that? Um, I think she's suspected or something, but I, you know, not necessarily. I'm playing pretty cool. And uh, uh, has she tried to have uh, children or anything? No, I, I told her if, if if she has children, I said I don't care about the citizenship. Then I'll leave. <laughs> no kids. Uh huh. And so she's uh, cooperated. And is uh, she banging other guys? Is she like trying to act like you have a real relationship? What is it? No, she's not banging anybody. She she pretty much wants us to be together and you know carry out this happy household deal. And and uh, it costs me a lot of money, so I'm I'm gonna play it till the till the end. You know, uh -huh. I have to stick with it. It's another year. I'm suffering for the for the rest of the guys. And uh, let me ask you another question here. When you go out and bang chicks, like, uh, how do you get away with it? Where do you go? How do you do it? I have a uh, I have a good good job, so uh, I I do a lot of traveling. That pretty much covers up, you know. I can tell her I'm out of town for a while and going here and there, and uh, she believes me. She trusts me, so I mean, that's how how I just kind of figure things out. I see. Wow, wow, wow. All right, James. You have another year to go, and then you're free. Yeah, Professor. Hey, check me out with the uh, JFK Jr. JFK Jr. Here you go. one 800 Your phone number, Aaron, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? All right, Aaron. Well, I uh, after five years of being with this lady... Um, kind of laid down a law on me, came down and had a lifelong talk and uh, came down to it. She uh, decided that she was either going to get married or she was leaving. I and, see. Uh, and, and, uh, and you had to marry her? Oh, you know, not, not I, I would say I was pressured and forced into marriage. I would say I had to. I mean, of course, let's thrill says I don't have to, but um, given the situation I was in financially and um, we have a lot of financial ties, like I said, we've been together for five years now and... Uh, um, Which, by the way, you're 25. That's why I tell guys not to even have a serious relationship before well, you're 25. Yeah, and, and it gets worried. Well, I, I got married at 18, um, which is part of the reason why I was just turned off to marriage altogether. I had a really bad relationship, had a child way too young, and um, I'm still paying for it today. You know. It's, uh, oh, didn't you learn your lesson the first time? Well, yes and no. Um, I mean, obviously, I, I, I got married again, but uh, it, it's a different. I mean, I'm a little older now. I mean, obviously, 18 and 25. Is Wait till she gets pregnant now and does it to you again. Nah. <laughs> History repeats itself, pal. I'll tell you what. Thanks a lot for the call. I appreciate it. It's the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles to 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Do you feel you were forced into getting married? It's Marie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Hello, Tom. I just want to start off by saying I absolutely love you. Why, um, thank you. <laughs> love, love. Um, I'm just calling to say I was pretty much forced into getting married. You were forced. How did that happen? Uh, kids. What do you mean, kids? What happened with kids? Kids I didn't want to even have. Well, how could someone force you to have kids? I think he played with my birth control, personally. Because I've been on it for two years, and all of a sudden, you know, he'd done a booty call. You know, he was supposed to graduate college and go away, and he didn't. And then what, I was kind of, what kind of birth control were you on? Well, I was just on the pill, the first one. How could he uh, screw around with that? He didn't live with you or anything, did he? He was, like, in and out. He was a lot. Because I felt bad for him because he had a freaking drunk roommate that was, like, drunk all the time. Uh-huh. 
I know. So what could he do to a birth control pill? I don't know. Change it with the placebo. I have no idea because I've been on it for two years, and it's not like I was not sexually active anywhere in there. I never had a problem before. And why didn't you have an abortion? Um, I figured it would make him run like a normal guy. And, like, I would just keep one. I'm like, all right, I'll get over it. But he didn't leave. He still didn't go away. He wanted to be some, I don't know, whatever. So I'm like, well, at least... So you continued having sex with him, even though you wanted him to go away. Yeah, because now I was kind of afraid of him. I got to a point where... You were afraid of him. Did he ever hurt you? He was very intimidating. What did he do? Like, one fight he had, like, he threw... A coffee mug so hard into the refrigerator that it dented the refrigerator door. And you stayed with him why? I told him to get out because I just, I was an emotional bag myself at the time. Because I had a hard growing up and just, you know, bad relationship with dad and stuff. I see. As usual. That's usually the case, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. So you stayed with him and had another kid. Why yeah, didn't you have an abortion? Why didn't you have an abortion then? I don't know, because I did have one before, and I don't know why, because I felt like my parents would just be totally, you know, my mother would be all down on me or whatever, you know, being the Catholics. Well, how would she know? You didn't have to tell anybody. I know. We were living with him at that time, though. And she would not know if you went and had an abortion. How would she know? I know, but that one actually made me happy. But I didn't, still didn't want, still thought, well, maybe this is just supposed to be that way. What would, what would make you think that? I have no idea. He uh, was cute, but that's the best I could get that. He was cute. <laughs> yeah. He was, was a bad. cute, threatening individual. <laughs> yeah, it was really bad. But no, I mean, he is a big muscle guy, and so his, his size intimidated me, and his anger at times intimidated me. Yeah, but sure turned you on in the bedroom, didn't it? It sure did. <laughs> that's, that's always what this is about, isn't it? <laughs> it is. So now I'm trying to just go a different route. But, what uh, route is that? Is he still there? Oh, no. He's in the, actually back east. Where did he go? Why did he go? He Well, what he did is we lived here, and then he, we moved out of California for his job, which I really didn't want to do at that point in time either. But I'm like, you know, I have a family here, and I'm supposed to try to make this work the best I can. Right. And was he still throwing coffee mugs and other uh, paraphernalia? No, he was doing a little better. He was just more on the controlling, always thinking I was sleeping with somebody. If a guy yeah. talked to me, he just wanted to sleep with me. Probably should have. Well, yeah, I did that once. I bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> I went in a restaurant like that other guy. I <laughs> uh, see. All right, so he went back east, you went with him, and then what? when did you leave and why? I left about a couple months ago because he hurt the two little kids. Great. He got a, he got a little too angry about some mess they made of cereal, and he rubbed their faces in it like you would a dog. Oops, sorry. Pooped on the floor. Uh-huh. And so he gave him he gave a two year old a rug burn on her forehead and a three year old a rug burn on her shoulder. Why would he treat the kids any different from mommy? Well, mommy was at work, waitressing. But why would he treat the kids any differently? Why would you expect this man could be around children? Well, I have no idea. He always been a nice You have no idea? Well he was always nice around him, you know, like his nieces and nephews. So what? They were not his children. No, I you're right, right. Well, I think you know what? If they were his nieces and nephews, he tried that on them. They were the, the 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 brother or the sister-in-law. They would probably slug them. Right. Well, that's what I did. And they that, wouldn't tolerate that, but you would. I didn't. That was the only one time, and I left. I up. And that was the one time he aimed something at the children. That that was when you realized it was bad when your little children were getting hurt. Yeah. As long as you were the one getting hurt, it was okay with you. It wasn't okay. It was getting... We if you continue to stay and continue to make children with a man, you have signed off on it. Oh, I am tied. I am not having any more kids ever again. I am done with kids. Uh-huh. So I just... I don't know. It's just... Yeah, it was a bad emotional thing. It was more of an emotional force. And, and let me make a prediction. The next man you're with will be exactly the same. Because women like you and never learn from these things. Never. No? Nope. There's some big brute of a guy you'll run into one day, and you'll think, oh, look at that big teddy bear. I just want to put his arms around me. Oh, oh, oh. You know, and, oh he's so tough, and I he's tough, and he's tender, and he's tough. And he's got those tattoos, and he's tough. And, he's... and then one day, he puts his, one day he introduces his fist to your face, and uh, it's like, well, maybe I deserve this. Maybe I should have behaved better. Never. It's the same syndrome. 
Now, see this one? Yeah. The one I'm already seeing now is totally opposite. I see. Totally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice guy, but I he's mean... He's a uh, nice kidding. guy because he doesn't nice have you in his back pocket yet. Nice and slow. He'll start slugging you the minute uh, he thinks you're his girlfriend. <laughs> no, I'll punch you're you. laughing now, I'm telling you. Yep. No, I weren't. I didn't get hit. He, only had to do a, he just emotionally hurt me. Oh, he, and and he, that, that, that's just as bad as physical. Well, you won't put up with it now, you say. I know. My, I, know. I say you won't no, even I'm... know when you're being emotionally hit until after you're in too deep. Yeah. Did you, and by the way, and I know the answer to this before I ask, but I feel compelled to ask, so did you go into therapy? Oh, yeah. You did? Oh, yeah. We went to marriage counseling. No, 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 no. Not with him. Oh, yeah. I was Just told. you. Oh, yes. Yeah. You did? Yep. And what did the therapist tell you? Just that, I don't know, he just sat, you know, sat there like he can't believe I'm... In no, no, place. stop, stop. I don't care about him. Did you, by yourself, one and only you, go into a therapist by yourself, you yes. and the therapist? Yes. Forget My about him. What did the therapist say to you when the two of you were alone in the room, you and the therapist, and the therapist said, Marie, I'm going to tell this to you and only you? What? That you don't deserve to live like this. That you are a better person than that. That I'm educated and pretty and just smart and I just... You don't need to. You're too young to put up with a bully like that. Uh huh. And it and took me a year of the counseling. And now you're cured. No, I'm not cured. Did, are you still going to a therapist? Yeah, I'm trying to find a therapist out here now. Meaning you're not going to a therapist. Not yet, because well, I. You just said you were, but in reality you're not. I was in Connecticut. We're I not in Connecticut. Connecticut. We're in Southern California now. Yes. Yes. And, and I've been here for a while. Cross country. I just I. Two months. How long have you been here? Two months. Two months. How long does this take? Time because there's a waiting list for every place you go. Hang on a second. Uh, Beth, what do you want to say to Marie here? I want you to get her off the radio. She is stupid. She's an idiot. She's a total moron. And anything that he has done to her, she has stayed for, so she's earned it. Marie, uh, Beth thinks you deserve what you got. She disagrees with your therapist. You deserved it, she said. Right. If, he's, if you're going to stick around for a guy to hit you around, fine. You, you, you earned me. it. Take him. He didn't hit me. It took once for him to hurt my kids, and I said, screw you, I'm out. But mentally he hurt you, and he no, threw a coffee I... mug so hard at the refrigerator, he dented the refrigerator. Let me tell you something. If he's going to be an emotional ass to you and treat you like crap, what makes you think for one second that he cares about your kids? They're not his, they're yours. He doesn't care about you. He throws a right. cup of the refrigerator. Why do you think he's going to care about your kids? Why don't you care about your kids and I not think expose I them to the country? Oh, you know now what? To even, listen, to even expose your kids to a guy like that is a crock. They're his. Oh. They're his own children. And I yeah, 3,000 miles away to make sure they're safe. Well, 3,000 miles away to get listen. away. I'm telling you what, you're going to sit here, you're going to wallow in the mud and crop and bitch and moan all you can to nope. everybody's sympathy. But let me tell you what, no, you earned this. The first time you thought he was an ass to you, you should have walked away. It's really easy. You walk. That's right. It would be for a person who wasn't already emotionally unstable. You're right. Oh, please. You know what? And people who say they're emotionally unstable are people who are being sexually abused by your own goddamn father from the age of 12 to 16. You How do you know that? And like I just you said, right? Mom, you know what, Mom? Right? There are people in this world who are going to wallow in their bad fortune their whole no, life. Because they're not sucking up your welfare to then, do it. But no, I went and got my own goddamn yeah, education, and I could support myself just fine. Without him or your help. And let like me under, he, let me understand something. Yeah, did, wait, 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 wait. Let me understand something, Marie. Uh, you tell you tell us you were raped by your father between ages 12 and 16. Then you got married and you lived at your parents' place with your abusive husband. With my mother, yeah. Oh, okay. So your mother had split up with your abusive husband. Yeah. Your abusive her. father. Yeah. Her abusive husband. Yeah. I see. What do you think about arrested. that? Beth? Well. 
listen, I think that it's a tragedy that any human being suffers any type of negative physical or mental abuse at the hands of another human being. But I also believe that as an educated person, you should have the ability to rise above your misfortune and do the right thing and not choose an idiot to be with. That's what I think. It's, it's nice you know to what? say it when you're and from the outside, but only now, took me one. Hey, now once you figured out the rest, quit bitching about what happened to you and look forward. Don't keep looking back. All right, right. it's over. Yeah, you are, right, it is. But you are looking back. Hey, you're looking back because you're looking back back you on the phone. was about the fourth marriage, so that's you, what I was talking about. You are looking back because you're talking to Tom like it's about how bad it was for you. That's why you're looking back. And don't don't say anything about me because you don't know fact about me. What? If you don't if you don't do some reflection, you repeat. I am not going to repeat. Reflection is what you do with your therapist. You don't do it on national radio. Christ, you're an idiot. I love Tom. Whatever. You are. Listen, you're an idiot. Fine, fine. All right, on that note, Beth and Marie, thank you so much. Like it, Tom. Like it. 800, 800, Tom. Tom. Tom like it. The Tom Like It Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Oh, you, the caller, you got married because you felt you were forced into it. If that's you... 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Aaron on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Aaron. How are you hanging? Hanging right, Aaron. Oh, I feel you on the story, Tom. Do tell. Oh, well, it started off, I dated this girl for a while. We were fine. We had unprotected sex. I was an idiot. I, of course, when idiots have unprotected sex, they come up with the mistake of having children. That's but right. Once, once the child is born, the parents are always constantly pressuring that you, you need to get married. This is how it's going to be. This is, like you said, the best your life is ever going to get. That's right. It go, just goes downhill after that. Boy, I tell you, if I would have found you five years ago, Tom, this would have never happened. I was right here five years ago, Aaron. Uh, too bad you weren't here. That's right. Unfortunately, now, uh, you know, it's it's... Eight years later, five years of marriage. I'm I'm looking for a way out right now. You just like you said, they they chunk up, they they spend the money. Women don't have the worst. They have the worst saving sense of anybody. Well, uh, saving sense. Women do not save money. They spend money. Sure, they do. They save money on clothes. They save money. No, no. They, they, the point is, saving money means putting it in a bank or in a mutual fund or a checking account exactly. or something. Uh, women do not save money. The way women save money is by saying, they're having 70% off at Hugo Boss. They're having 60% off at BB. They're having 50% off over at Rampage. Oh, my God, look at all the money we're going to save. That's how women save money. Buy one shoe, get one half See, price. As a man, I save money by putting it in the bank. Where it belongs. Right. Thank you, Tom. Take me out with a bong hit and a Kobe Bryant. Here you go. In my heart, in the air I breathe. This is so special to me. Sound like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Lady, how old are you? I'm forty one years old. You're over the hill. I mean, I can't waste my time like this. The point of me calling in was not to talk to some immature man that wants. You're a wrinkled to... douchebag. The Sound Like It Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-COM. Do you feel you were forced into getting married, Chris? Hello? Yes. Yes, I'm here. All right, good. Did you want to I'm talk here. to Tom? Go ahead, buddy. Did you want to talk to Tom? Yeah. Okay, hold on, please. Like his show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is Chris on the Tom Like his show. 
Hey, John, first time caller. I know it. Shows, yes. All right, buddy. Hey, I got roped into a relationship uh, say about 10 years ago. Right. It's going through college, married, uh, or actually hooked up with this chick. Thought she was hot. Hit about four or five different girls at the time. Fell in love with another girl, and uh, the girl that I hooked up with originally got pregnant, roped in, oldest trick in the book. So I uh, went and told her parents. Her parents said, uh, you know, you got to do the honorable thing. So I did. Had a second kid, and uh, here I am. Why did you have a second kid if you felt that like you were forced into the first one? Well, I thought, I thought why not keep them in the same uh, litter? You know, I'd rather, I'd rather have three kids with one mother than three kids with three different ones. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's, that's brilliant thinking there. <laughs> not absolute, but I guess. Oh, well, uh, so now you're really trapped. Well, I'm I'm somewhat trapped. I, I uh, you're not somewhat trapped. You're really trapped. People tell me that the uh, it's cheaper to keep them around, and then the other side of the coin is. Oh, it I, sounds like a true love story. What can I say? The Tom Likas Show. It's four o'clock in the City of Angels. Ninety-seven point one.